Hello and welcome to this new video. I'm Chris and today we want to talk about a very abstract topic. Compactness, which my main inten intention is to get yeah, the thinking of closeness and boundness to get out of your head. Because this is very wrong in general and we want to talk about what compactness really is, yeah? So we want to mo motivate that first. And before we do that, um, we want to, what we want to do now is to order sets that are maybe very big. And you know that from first semester where you had that there are countable infinite sets and um, uncountable infinite sets. This is the first ordering of sets, but you can think of, okay, now I have uncountable infinite sets. Can I order that, them more precisely? And yes, you can. And how do we do that? We do that like that, yeah? So if you think of a real example, what we want to do now is take two shopping centers and we want to order them by by their size. So you can think of how how can we do that? Um, we can do that by considering which shopping center um, has more people in it. Yeah, and this is precisely what we're doing with sets now. We take in a set M. And then we take those sets, those circles, and we cover M by those sets. Okay. This is a so-called open open cover. So <laughs> consider this as open. Um, this is what we want to do now. Okay. So a second example, and this is a really good one to to get the right motivation. We take the real line, yeah, and this part of it from A to B, and we cover it by intervals, those intervals. Of course, those intervals um, are on this line too, but <laughs> I I draw it like that because otherwise you couldn't see anything. Okay, and if we do that and define that precisely, then we can cover R by this union of those intervals and K is uh, a whole number. But now we have a problem because if we take only one K out, so for example, K equals two, then we don't have an um, open cover anymore of R. So this should be the, the um, intuition and um, motivation that R seems to be really big and it is. We will see and you will get this intuition that R is not compact. Okay, so let's define that. Take a um, topological space, then M is, co se is said to be compact for all open covers ui of m there exists a finite subcover of it and what do we mean by that um, m is in this cover but we only take finite many finitely many of them so we have an index set e in i with only finitely many elements so, and the first remark is, and I underlined it uh, two times, it's very important that the covers are open. You, you can think of, hey, I can define compactness by, by uh, closed covers, but you will see <laughs> um, very fast that this isn't a really good idea. So let M be Hausdorff then a possible cover would be one with one element sets. 
this is possible because one element sets in a Hausdorff space are closed. And by that, you get directly that only finite M's would be compact then. And of course, this is topological nonsense because that finite M's are compact is something we really want to, to have. But we want to deal with um, yeah, infinite sets mainly. And those wouldn't be compact, so this doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the intuition is that compactness is a finiteness property. Yeah, so we have a um, finite subcover for every open cover. Yeah, every arbitrary open cover. And compactness generates good behavior. And this is mainly what mathematicians wanted to have. Um, years and years ago because they 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 saw okay they have a few properties they should have th a special property in it so the same property in it what property can that be and at some point they realized this should be compactness and an example <coughs> is the minimum maximum principle of continuous functions you might know and in this sense compact sense are small in a mathematical sense and this is precisely what we what we saw here so we took out 1k and then we it wasn't a open cover anymore of R. So in this sense, R is very big. Okay, and R is not compact. So compact sets are mathematically small. And you have a better control of it. Okay. So, and now we're coming to the main point of this video. So we're looking at some examples. Okay, and those are just examples. Of compact sets you might know let's take an topological space x and then we call x with the heine borel property if every subset of it which is um, closed and bounded is compact and for that we will write in general this and of course, this is the space of the Heine Borel um, topological spaces. And these are really just examples. And we will see why this is f even false in general. Okay. So first, we will take R with the Euclidean topology. Then, the space of all compact subsets of R is isomorphic to this HB space. But in general, this is false. So let X be Banach. Then in general, X is not a subset of HB. We will see that in, in a few moments. So, But first, we want to prove that, okay? So take take an A and B in R, A less or equal to B. Then the Heine Borel sets at the intervals A, B closed, okay? So closure and boundness of this interval are clear, okay? But it remains to show that this interval is compact. And the most elementary proof idea of that is the following. Of course, there are many more, but this is, in my opinion, the most elementary one. And this idea wasn't written down by me. <laughs> Would be really nice if. Um, it's by the so-called Alexander Subbase Theorem. Okay. You can Google that if you want. 
it's really nice and some kind of generalization of the Heine Borel proofs you might have seen in your first semester. So choose an arbitrary open cover, of course an arbitrary, because we want to show that for every open cover of AB, okay? And what we want to do now is a we may we want to do that in a cons constructive way, okay? Or you can say inductive. But I don't think this is the right terminology. Um so Const uh, construction is, is better for it. So take this interval AA and of course this is just the set of A with A in it and this is trivially um, compact because we have just one element so we can mainly take one of those this cover of those UIs and can cover it. Okay, and now we t take into it the completeness of R, so the completeness axiom to be precisely. And with that, we know that the supremum exists. And then we take an um, interval, arbitrary interval, for an arbitrary x, x in in the interval a b okay and then we get that a x is compact so first we had this that this is compact now we have that this is compact so this is a step forward and what we're doing now is gluing those two steps together or those both those both constructions and now we have to show that b is uh, less than the supremum of this interval plus an epsilon, okay? Because if we show that, then we have b smaller than, then we have b in there and we can take x as b, okay? And then we, we're finished because then a, b is compact. And how can you show that? Yeah, by a typical contradiction argument okay you might see have seen thousands of in your first semester for proving supremums okay so now the second part x as a banner space is not in hb and a counter example which yeah, is on the hand is taking this banner space because we have seen in chapter one that this is a banner space so we don't have to sh show this here so we take the continuous functions with the supremum norm again now we define fn as n with a support in n minus one n okay so this is of course continuous yeah, um, also and now we cover it with those UIs, okay? So the modulus of Fi less than an i, okay? But for that open cover, um, it doesn't exist in finite subcover, okay? So now we have seen that the generalization of this is false, okay? And you can even say more about this, and we will see that in a few seconds. Yeah, and now you might think, okay, and what was the problem here? Why um, c can't we generalize that? The problem here is that the space is infinite dimensional, and infinite dimensional banner spaces um, can't transfer. Um, the compactness of this interval to a familiar problem, okay? This is what you also have seen in this counter example, and that doesn't hold. And you, and I said to you that 
where is it? I said to you that we can generalize that because yeah, in general it holds that for all banner spaces that are infinite dimensional, those are not in HB, uh, a subset of it. So the more precisely, there are no infinite dimensional banner spaces that have the Heine Borel property. And maybe we will talk about that later because we can't prove that at this point because we need a theorem of Rees. And this will take a few videos before we are there. So maybe later, okay? Okay, and finally, okay, mainly we will look at metric spaces in this video series. But of course there are in general um, non-metric spaces that are compact. And I want to give you two examples for a compact Hausdorff space that is not metrizable. And precisely I mean by that that the second um, kind of axiom doesn't hold, okay? Okay, first example is uh, very classic, but I want, don't want to go to in much detail because, yeah, this would take an own video for it. <laughs> so, if I look at this set with the ordering topology, I want, don't want to discuss here what this is, but I give you a link for it where you can read about it. Then I take it in the description too. And this is the so-called double arrow space, okay? Okay, maybe why is this a double arrow space? Because we take copies of this with zero and one, okay? So mainly. And then the second example, where we take infinite copies of the unit interval, okay? In the um, product topology. And there's a very famous and very mighty theorem called the theorem of Tychonov, which shows that this, yeah, in general, Cartesian products are compact in the product topology. But, okay, this would really lead too far. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's one video would be enough for Tychonov. Maybe you need two for it. So we won't do that now. Okay. So that's, that's for today. Um, now maybe some exercises you can think of and I will do again a, a video at the end where I discuss those exercises. So first show that no incomplete metric space is compact, okay? And for that I gave you a tip um, you saw in your basic analysis lessons. In metric spaces, sequence compactness and compactness are equivalent. And of course, this is very nice because we have here a completeness property. So we're dealing with Cauchy sequences and here we have sequences too. So this shouldn't be too hard then. And second exercise, consider this space and of course, this deals with your understanding of the proof of the heine borel theorem. So now you, here you show that it also holds for Cn. And there you have an analog property. This should also be not too hard, I think. Okay, so that was it for today. And thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.